Hello, my name is Adrian Nelson, and I would like to speak to you about the potential of knowing who you are. And knowing who you are can be one of the most challenging journeys that you ever need to take in this world. Because in order to really know who you are, you need to understand all of who you are. And in order to understand all of who you are, it means that you sometimes have to go to those dark, gory sort of places that a lot of times in life you wouldn't like to go to. You would rather just be love and light. You know, you would rather just be happy and joyous and floppity floppity, everything's cool and joy. But that is not always serving us in the best possible way. Now, when you look at my story, or, or rather look at my heritage, I am in South Africa, what is called a colored person. And being a colored could be a little bit of a difficult concept for, for people from other parts of the world to sometimes grasp, because in South Africa, if you are colored, it doesn't mean that you are black. And the, the sort of like distinction there comes in that there were people that were inherently living in South Africa very peacefully, all sorts of different tribes, um, living their traditional ways, living their lives, living in harmony with the land. And then in came a couple of other people. You know, we're not playing the blame at anybody because the past is the past, but in came a couple of other people, um, you know, um, light-skinned people from different parts of the world, you know, setting up home and tent and castle and whatever. And then what happened is, and, and this is something that sort of also came back from in the ancient days, and I know that a lot of times people like to trip on the monarchy in very negative sort of ways, but when the English first came here, um, and they were very clear that the people that came to sort of like set up roots and stuff over here, that they are not to use the natural inhabitants from the country, or, or rather they're not to turn them into slaves. But then what happened is that, you know, a couple of ships sailed up along the coast of Africa and they went to places like Madagascar and they even got further out like, um, like, um, like India and places like that. And they literally went to go grab people off the land, like, like people would do when they go and steal fruit in somebody's orchard or something in the middle of the night and brought those people very much against their will and under some really perilous circumstances to South Africa and then they were turned into slaves. Um, so what then obviously happened is all these people from these very diverse or different sort of backgrounds got together and then of course people being people, you know, they'll be like, oh look at them, you know, they've got such nice, nice, nice dark eyes and they've got such nice bodies and, and, and this is obviously going ping pong, you know, across all different you know, past because remember these were before the times of television and you know um, the internet and stuff like that. So if you were sort of like, let's say you were a black person, you have never seen a white person before. You know, so you've never seen somebody with eyes that are the same color as the trees and the leaves or the ocean, and you know they've got this beautiful flowy sort of hair. And then as a white person, for example, you you know, you've never seen somebody with a smooth black skin and, you know, these um, pitch black eyes or, you know, or, or whatever really these natural, like, good looking bodies and, you know, curves where other people don't have curves and so forth and so forth. And as human beings, obviously, we are souls, you know, we are souls having a human being experience. And when you see this diversity in others, it is something intriguing and you know, what do people normally have when they see that, you know, when you see some, somebody that intrigues you, you want to, you know, you know, you want to get down with them, you know, and so from all of this sort of interracial, um, you know, um, sort of like coupling, expanded a new race, and those are really the colors, you know, so you've got all these different influences, um, background influences and whatever which makes being colored quite diverse and they normally I would say in South Africa they probably well all over South Africa but thriving possibly mostly so to speak in Cape Town because you know Cape Town obviously back in the day it was like it was like the New York of South Africa everything was happening there you know um, 
And so my mother's from Cape Town, so I've got all of that on my one side of my family. And then on my other side, on the Nelson side, and I used to think that this was just some bullshit story until I started to do some research and actually found out that it was the truth, that the Nelson part of my family, um, they from more sort of like Sintelina, which is like way up the coast of Africa. And there's like a little island over there where slaves used to be kept and things like that. And my family comes from there, even though nobody was technically from Sintelina, so to speak. You know, it was more sort of like a... Um, like a like a port of change, but it was it was quite hot property back in the day when it came to the slaves, and so my family, my ancestors, you know, they were basically chained in a ship, you know, put on the water. And remember back in the days, those ships were, you know, they 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 were something different if you were on those ships because, you know, they didn't have like all this sort of modern steerage and GPS and, and, and whatever. And I mean, you look at something like Titanic that went on the rocks with all the modern equipment of back in, in the days. These slave ships didn't have those things, you know, and it was a very Viking sort of vibe where you were chained to the bottom and you had to row. So you were a slave that were captured and then you still had to row towards wherever it is that they were going to sell you off a chopping block. Um, and I mean, these people lived in harrowing circumstances, you know. Um, it is believed that only a quarter of, of the slaves that were chained up in these ships, because these people for months and months and months this journey took, you didn't see the light of day, and unless you looked through like a little peeping hole, you had to roll at the beat of the drum, you know, otherwise you get the whip. Um, and these people obviously had no hope. They had no hope for any bright future because they pretty much knew they were going into the darkest pits of hell. Um, and a lot of people died, as I said, you know, only, estimate only about a quarter of these or 25% of these people actually made it to the end of the dead journey where they were heading. But, you know, um, because these people were seen as barbarians, you had to row along with people next to you that were dead, that were dying, that were dead, that were decomposing until you get to the end over there. And then anyway, so what happened is that the ship sort of like went around the... So South Africa is at sort of like the tip of, of, of the African continent. And um, Sitsikama, it's called. It's a, it's a Khoisan word, so like the Bushman. And it means place of many waters. So it's actually Titsikama because uh, the Khoisan language is very... You know, and the, and the Khoi, the Bushman, the sun, um, they... And a lot of people think that that's the same thing. It's not. But, you know, for... Um, for um, um, for the sake of, um, I think, slightly more familiarity or to be able to, for the sake of relatability, let's just call it a different type of Bushman. Um, they've been walking the desert for years and there's just black people that were living on the rocks and whatever. Um, you know, so obviously it was intermingling with them as well, with the slaves and whatever. But so with my, with, with my father, from my father's side of the family, the Nelsons, the ship went onto the rocks. It was shipwrecked because uh, Sitsikama or the Eastern Cape, where I'm from, or, or where I grew up basically, or half, I sort of grew up half there and half in, in the city like Cape Town, you know. Um, these ships went on the rocks and these people landed there. And when I really found this out, now, you can take this one of two ways. I'm talking about knowing who you are. Knowing about who you are is about your heritage, your background. So you can roll with this one of two ways. You can say that, you know, on my mother's side, I come from these slaves. And on my father's side, I'm from, from these people that were, you know, held in captivity. And you can be very angry about it. But when I really thought about it, I really realized that I come from this background of these people that were slaves, that were put in ships, that were basically destined for damnation. And they went on these rocks. They didn't understand these people's languages. They didn't understand their traditions. They didn't know where they were. But they were somehow able to land in a space that was completely alien to them. And they were able to make it work. And they were able to thrive from that. And so for me, there's the understanding when I learned regression hypnosis, um, you know, along with NLP as well, but specifically regression hypnosis because I've really studied it in depth and I'm still studying it because it's so fascinating and it's the mind and everything. Um, what makes you who you are? And we all have all these different potentials, but it's what are you focusing on? And for me, I'm very much about focusing forward because there was a time in my life that I just felt like I must be the biggest mistake. I felt that I was irrefutable proof that this supposedly fail-proof God cannot be that amazing because he made me. That was my belief. 
But when I found out where I'm from, I understood that my within my DNA, because we are born basically 99.9% programmed. I realized that there's a core strength, survival strength within me, that you can put me in the deepest, most hopeless spaces in life, and I will find a way to survive, to make it work for myself. I realized my strength. I, re I realized that I was born with that strength. That as a human being, and I like to say that human beings are basically glorified clones because we are, you know, you're a clone of other people, of your parents, and they're clones of others and others and others. So you have all of that. And we have all this potential inside of us. What are you focusing on? Because whatever you are focusing on is the potential that you are lock unlocking for yourself. So you can, you know, you can be angry and even feel entitled. And many people do because, you know, um, my forefathers were slaves and we were oppressed. So I am no longer just a successful entrepreneur or a successful man. I am now a successful black man or, or colored man in my case. You know, I come from the slaves, you know, and, 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 and yes, you can be proud of it. And I can't tell you what to do, but de depending on how you choose to relate to your past determines your experience of life, determines your potential. So the question is, are you going to focus on the fact that the past was hard for your ancestors? Because let me tell you something for nothing, the past was hard for everybody. Doesn't matter what your background was, black, white, in between, cross, mix, whatever. The past has been difficult for everyone because we are living in a world um, of expansion, of growth, of awakening. We are in the age of awakening and that has been coming for a while. And a lot of times we have to first see what it is the darkest dark that we can go into so that we can see at some point in some way i said yes to that for my consciousness but now i'm saying no thank you no longer doing that and that is what i specialize in doing in in my work um you know as a reiki practitioner and a, and a teacher and crystal healing and psychic development and life coaching and tarot reading i call it tarot life coaching and you know everything that i do I sometimes say to people, they, say, they expect me to, that they want to maybe come to me and just have one session. And yes, I've had incredible success with just one session with people before. But if you are really serious about your growth, I am highly passionate about walking the path with you, systematically walking the path with you, step by step. You know, supporting your growth, unlocking your potential. What are your core beliefs about yourself in your subconscious? about who you are, about what your worth and your value is. And how many of those patterns are even yours and how many of those things are just inherent, you know? And when we really take an honest look at ourselves and we say, okay, this is where I'm coming from. This is how the past is shaping me. And that is really what past life regression is all about. It is about saying, what is the programming? Yes, we're speaking about your patterns, but your patterns is predominantly the programming that you came with into this life. I always say that human beings, you know, you arrive and you are like a laptop that is arriving with pre-installed software. You came with that. You are Windows 10 or whatever, you know. And this is your blueprint. But there's so much more to the blueprint. And that is what makes things like numerology incredible, astrology, uh, tarot. We feel that our life or we believe that our lives are set in stone, but it's not. And the more you understand who you are, what your potential is, what are the ways in which you can thrive, and what are the ways in which you can naturally and inherently sabotage your own thriving. So instead of losing at the 11th hour, maybe making a breakthrough at the 11th hour, the difference lies, difference lies in your energy. And it's about understanding who you are. It's about knowing who you are. You, you know, so many people are speaking about being strong and powerful and independent and shining their light and all of those type of things. But remember, we are living in a universal possibility expression, so you can call it Earth, you can call it the universe, you can call it the cosmos, that is coming from duality, that is dual in its nature. In order to understand light and the potential of light, you need to understand dark and the potential of dark. And when you do, 
you have the potential to choose for yourself who and what it is that you want to be in this life and your beliefs those core beliefs determines how you live your life and a lot of times people come to me and they say to me adrian i want to know my potential but here's the thing about your potential about your life path about your destiny it is determined by who and what you are in this space right now a lot of times we feel and and um there is something that i learned from teal swan and it was such an amazing thing to to realize is that so many times in life we feel that you know if i end my life now then um you know then i'm just done with this but remember you are consciousness with a body and a lot of times i found it when i do channeling sessions you know and i work with this collective consciousness that call themselves smile um and and they focus more on your you know your karmic part your cosmic wheel balancing your evolutionary part as a soul having a human being experience and those type of things um you know a, a lot of times when we understand the inherent beliefs in ourselves it it lets you choose how you're going to go forward so the future is not set in stone nothing is set in stone nothing Nobody has observed the future yet, so it doesn't exist. But everything also exists in potential and possibility. So even when you get a vision, for example, or a dream, you know, for where you are going, it's always just the potential. So there's no need to be scared of these things. Because knowledge is power. The more you understand where you come from, the more you understand what your subliminal programming is, which makes it possible for some people to thrive and for some people to just never make it, no matter how hard they try. Sometimes we get so upset because some people, you know, it seems like they're just cruising to life and everything is just working for them. You know, you're like, what the hell is that about? It's about their energy. It's about their subconscious belief. It is about their deeper foundational belief about who you are and who you are not. So in all my work, you know, I suppose if you want to, you can call it counseling sessions. But in all my work and in regression hypnosis and in tarot and in crystal healing and Reiki and distance healing sessions, and different energy balancing sessions and i like to do those over a period of like four or five days to give your time your, your energy time to acclimatize to your potential it's all about finding the balance within yourself and learning how to maintain that yourself you know so that you can grow in your life that's really everything that i do and that's, that's what i'm so passionate about and i want to let you know that if you are interested in seeing how beautiful your life can become then I am highly passionate about helping you with that because so many of us complain about the past what everybody did in the past taking it back to all the you know the the, the, um, the perceived unfairness slavery you know all sorts of um, all sorts of um, you know restrictions placed upon others stereotyping because of your background the color of your skin and your hair and your height and your social background and your financial standing and your sexual orientation and your religion and your traditional beliefs and so forth and so forth and so forth a lot of times our life don't work out because of the core belief that we have the voices that you're still hearing in your head from your childhood or maybe the beliefs that were carried over to you by your parents from their great grandparents that hatred might still be running through your veins and you're trying to live a beautiful loving kind compassionate life and it just ain't working for you it's because the consciousness is only about 10 percent of who you are all the rest is in the subconscious some people literally even operate up to 99 percent from their subconscious so you want to understand what that subconscious is what are you saying yes to what are you saying no to what are you saying like you know what this is no longer working for me because a lot of times people say, well, this is my challenge and I don't work with challenges because challenges are a manifestation of something in the past. I work with what we call in NLP, your core initiator. Why are you having what you are having? What is the reason for that? And when you go back to that and you, you sort of change the emotional tie around that, then everything just changes. You don't have to know what the answer is to your problems because when you understand how from a deeper part of you how your um your inner psyche your inner belief how it is creating your current problems whatever those problems are health wealth belief relationship career problems confidence problems self-sabotaging 
phobias, whatever it is. When you understand why you are having them, it is the understanding, and that is why knowledge is power, it is the understanding that presents you with an array of possibilities. Okay, so that is what I'm really passionate about, but really it comes down to knowing who you are. And knowing who you are gives the opportunity to choose consciously about who you choose to be from this moment going forward for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And I am focused on helping you find your power and placing you in a position to benefit from that power. To benefit from knowing who you are. To knowing your options, to seeing options that you didn't know that you had. To clear away obstacles that you didn't know that you had. So that your life can expand in abundantly positive ways. So that my life gets better and your life gets better and everybody else's life gets better. And the future is better for the next generation. Because consciousness continues. A lot of times you say, well, why would I care about the future? I'm not going to be there. Yes, you are. You are consciousness, you are everything, you are part of everything, everything is part of you. There is no separation. And the more we get on board with that, the better our lives get now and the better our lives get going forward. I wish you all the best. I wish you so many reasons to just smile from your heart. From my heart. Namaste. Love and light. My beautiful cosmic siblings. Bye.